you get going, I'm going to go somewhere. I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, in what agreement has the temple of God with idiots? I mean idols. 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 How do we all know you, you can be your worst idol? Amen. Me, myself, and I syndrome. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people if they do something. He says, therefore, if you will come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, there's something very important. And there's, there's an area where, you know, people know where you, whether you know the Lord or not. And that's how the, the Word tells us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But in the fear of God, it's reverence, honor, and respect. Reverence and honor and respect. And what are we doing? We are reverencing, we are honoring him, and we're respecting his presence. We are respecting his word. We are respecting. And when you fall in the area of respect, you can expect. So I, I want to share this with you because he says when we do this, he will be a father to us. Amen? He'll be a father to us. So there's an etiquette that we want to fall in the area of respect. In other words, when we are praising, worshiping the Lord, don't get up and don't move and go to the bathroom and disrespect his presence until you're in between songs. It's that simple. When the word is being released, wait for the scripture to end and then go to the and then move and go to the bathroom in between scriptures. Other than that, you are disrespecting him. And I don't like when people disrespect my father. It's offensive. Amen? And this is something that needs to be learned and put into practice. No matter where you go, no matter what church you go to, no matter what fellowship, do not re disrespect the presence of God. Amen? That's will show you that you are different than the world. There's a lot of Christians, but not all of them know the Lord. Amen? And they'll, you'll, they'll know who you are by your fruits and your honor and respect and reverence to his presence and his word. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now let's go to today's teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a message from the Lord. Psalm 43. Verse 1. Vindicate me. How many of y'all want to be vindicated? <laughs> O oh God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust men. For you are the God of my salvation. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? You know, many people think that way sometimes when they're being attacked or challenged or tried. Amen. He says something very important. He says, O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul, and why are you disquieted with me? My hope is in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. He says, vindicate me. In other words, <laughs> look, we are in a time right now <laughs> where God is resetting everything he is resetting his reality and we've talked about this already but i want to re-emphasize on something he's resetting his reality by establishing his light so that we can see and his truth so we can be free i'm going to say that again he's resetting his reality with his light to see and his truth to be free he, he's doing this to disconnect humanity from the deceitful lies of false realities and the oppression that the enemy brings in slavery. We are in that right now. That's why we see all the shaking and quaking and everything else. 
fully demonized individuals that are, you know, they say they want to be free, but they're not willing to pay the price to be free. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the, loss of the, the love of the Father is not in them. So the world is a whole nother reality. Amen? The world is a whole nother what? Reality. The Bible says that we live in a world, but we're not of the world because God has taken us out of the world. Because we're now living in the reality of truth and light. Well, that's why Jesus came and opened up the gate, the portals, so that we can have access. That's why he ripped the veil. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Lust is not of the Father. It's not of the Father of light. Amen? And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So again, doing the will of God means you're abiding in his true reality of light. You're abiding in the path of light. The Bible says that the word is a lamp unto my path, right? And a light. Verse 18. Little children, if it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all these things. I've not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise, the promise that he has promised us eternal life. Eternal life. Again, Lust is not of the Father of lights. The anointing, amen, which is the eternal presence and power of truth. And power is authority. Power is what? Authority. The eternal presence, power, and truth is the light, the word, his promises. It separates us from the path of darkness or false reality. It brings us into his marvelous light and true reality. In other words, we must live from his promise. Too many people are not living from his promises. They're living from other things in his promises. They're living from their circumstances. They're living from their fears. They're living from their sicknesses. They're living from all kinds of other things but his promises. And that's where we've got to reach. We've got to connect to the promises of God. Because living from his promises is living from the future. Amen? In verse 24 again, I want to read this to you. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from him from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and the Father. And again, these and this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you, draw you out, put you in another path. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In other words, you will stay connected. Abide in him and live from his promises of covenant and truth because he is the tree of life and light. The evil enemies are the tree of good and evil. Promoting the, a deceptive reality. In James chapter 1.
Living from the promise. Well, if you don't know the promises of God, how can you live from them? Then you live from your own emotions, your own opinions, your own feelings. About your failures and your regrets. About your emotional attachments. Amen? God is attempting to cut everybody loose. Because the Bible tells us that you cannot engage in warfare if you're entangled in the affairs of the world. And the enemy knows that. So warfare then becomes futile. Until we are disconnected from the entanglements. And the enemy knows this. He knows how to play us. James 1.16, please. What does it say? Do not be what? Deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. And of his own will he brought, he brought us forth by the word of truth, by his promises, that we might be the kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word or the promises and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. In other words, he goes back, he's living out of carnality instead of the spirit. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was, or he loses his identity. But he who looks in the perfect liberty of the law and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. In other words, do not be deceived into the false reality or deceptive belief systems. Be doers and hearers and followers of his words of promise. That is living from the promise, not from your circumstances, your emotions, your regrets, your failures, or even your successes. But his promises. Not living from your sicknesses or addictions or relationships or family and children or even debts. Amen? But live from his promises that are life-changing and they're healing. 2 Peter chapter 3. God is challenging his people. Remember, judgment begins in the house of God before brings judgment to the world. And we know judgment is coming to the world. Look, at there's a load of arrests going on. There's all kinds of stuff. Look at what's happening. Look at the, in this reality shift. What's he doing? He's changing the media operations. He's exposing all their wickedness. Amen? Because the media, the world lives off of the media, unfortunately. So now he's bringing light and truth into some of the media. So you got three major medias that are changing now that have been bought on Twitter. I love it. He's already fired 1,200 people. He's removed them. And he's about to do a lot more. Twitter is going to become a part of light in truth. Kanye West bought Parler. He's bringing in light and truth. Trump has truth social, light and truth. And many who are out there that are promoting through the media, light and truth. Testimonies and things that are happening. Why? Because they're like the prophetic releases. So much of the media is like a false reality promoter. They lie. They cheat. They bring people into a false reality. They keep them in a life of deception and delusion. They make false promises. They, I mean, I can't believe all the lies they're getting caught into. Amen? But it's all being exposed. Every bit of it. So it's got to start off with the media change. 
then the court changes. The lawsuits in the court, it's got to be done legally because God set up the laws. But see, they're going to court, and there's a lot of corrupt judges that are going to be removed. Many, many, many. There's a lot of corrupt prosecutors that are going to be removed. God is infiltrating all seats and positions of authority, political, judicial, even the medical. Think of all of these companies that have been murdering people. These so-called scientists that are serving darkness and servants and lovers of money are promoting things. All of these people that are involved in inhumane acts, their hands have blood on them and they will not escape. Everything's coming to a head quickly and rapidly. Now there will be a process of this whole transition. It's not going to come overnight. Amen? It will take years for the fullness to be established. But the kingdom of God will establish on the earth. We will have a large harvest. There will be the release of the second mantle. There's going to be things that you never thought you would do and you're going to do them. Because when the presence of the glory of God comes upon you, you can't help yourself but say, yes, Lord. Woo! <laughs> Oh, yeah, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is a thousand, like a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count it slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that everyone should come to what? Repentance. Repent, turn away. Amen? Repentance means to turn away from worldly ways and its false realities of deception and to the truth and light of his promises. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after we've received the knowledge of the promises of the truth, amen, there's no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, there's no more covering. You on your own. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be he thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who asks, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became compassion of those who were so trusted. For you had compassion on me and my change, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring, posse enduring possession for yourself in heaven. Verse 35, important. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence in the promises of God, which have great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God or completed your assignment, you may receive the promise. So remember, God gives us assignments. After we've complete them, a promise is released. For yet a little while, he, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. Endurance. Endurance. Yeah, we need endurance, all right. <laughs> from, this, from, any, from sin, which is the presence of evil, which entices and tempts humanity and believers to draw or drift into false reality. 
and leaving the true reality by compromise or allowing the true reality to be uh, contaminated. They leave the promises of God and they exchange it for a false reality and lust of the world. It's happening all over the world. Many are coming into the kingdom, but many are leaving. Psalm 37, in verse 1. Living from his promises, which living from the future. We can no longer live by how you feel, even some what, what you think. You must live from the promises of God. Do not fret because of what? Evil doers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do what? Good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness, which is his what? Promises. You know how many people don't feed on his promises? Easily swayed? What's God told you? I don't know. I'm listening more to my feelings. I'm listening more how I feel. I'm listening more to my circumstances. Come on. Trust in the Lord and do good and dwell on the land and feed on his promises. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, which is his promises, if you're living from them. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. In other words, he'll put you in the path of his true reality. And your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. Again, feed on his promises. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and keep you in the path of his true reality. Why? Because you're connected. You are connected to his promises. You live from his promises. You know, people live more. They're looking at living more by food. Remember, Jesus said something very powerful when they, when they wanted to feed him. He said, I come to do the will of my Father. That's why he blew everybody away when he said, here's your food, my flesh and my blood. Here's your food. Oh, he freaked people out. They left. That it was nuts. I ain't eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But they didn't have the understanding. He was trying to tell them, feed off of my promises. Feed off them. Live off of my promises. We've got to learn to live off of his promises. Not off what the world says. Not off of anything else. What did God say? What did the doctor say? I don't care what the doctor said. Don't get me wrong. We have a part to play. Amen? But if we'll start right from the beginning of living off his promises... We wouldn't go through all the crap we go through. Amen? And we go through it. But he's faithful to rescue us if we let him. 2 Peter 2, verse 18. You know what we're seeing be, being fulfilled right now through the world? The promises of God. We're watching it unfold. The promises of God that we have been waiting for. You know how many generations have been waiting to see what we see now? Let's not take that for granted. What you're seeing now is awesome. The dismantlement of the Antichrist regime. It's happening. Verse 18, let's speak it. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they lure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, and the ones who have actually escaped, because they knew the truth, from those who live in error. While they promise liberty, all these liars, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. Into what? False reality. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge or the promises of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. 
For it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment and deliver it to them. But as happened to them, according to their true proverb, a dog returns to his own environment and a soul having washed to her wallowing in mire. Evil entities that have entered human hosts of the Nephilim race and fallen angels, their offsprings, they speak swelling words and promises, enticing souls to leave the path of righteousness and the reality of Christ into the pathway of darkness because they refuse to live from the promises of God. Not living from the promises of God will draw you out. Then people put their hope in everything else. Amen? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. There are times when God is going to speak to you if you're truly hearing him. He knows there's certain things that we need a breakthrough for. Amen? He knows. Breakthrough comes by what you sow. Amen? You need healing? Pray for more people there who need healing. Does everybody understand that? You need a financial breakthrough? Sow more finances somewhere. Because his promise says, what you sow is what you reap. See, now we're living from the promises of God. I know people that have gotten rid of everything and sowed it into the kingdom. And they are so blessed and prosperous and infiltrating the world. But God told them. So don't do something out of emotion or desire. You make sure that it's out of the promises of God. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? Promises of God. He says what? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. They don't know his promises. And they're not living from them. And then when you try to speak to them, they don't get it because they're in another reality. They're in the world's reality. We're in peace, joy, and righteousness. We know the promises of God. We live from them. You don't have to work 90 hours a week. Hello? Hallelujah. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, and his divine power, his divine authority, divine power, power's authority, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue, through the knowledge of, or through the promises. All God's knowledge is promises. By which we have, by which have been given to us exceedingly a great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. So if you're living from the promises, can you manifest the divine nature? No. You must live from the promises of God for the divine nature to be partakers of the divine nature. That's what it's all about, isn't it? If you're living from the promises of the world, you ain't walking in the divine nature, that's for sure. Uh, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. Living from the promises, allow us to become partakers of the heavenly divine nature. Living into the world <laughs> will not do that. It will only bring the path of deception and corruption and a false reality. 2 Corinthians 1. We must practice. Encourage one another to begin to live from the promises of God. 
That's why we have a wonderful saying, who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Amen? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that you're not worthy? Who told you that? Hallelujah. In verse 20. Is everybody there? For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee or a promise. Amen. Or what? A promise. Yes. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to spare you I came, uh, I, I came no more to Corinth. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but as fellow workers for your joy, by your faith, for you stand. Promises are yes and amen. One of the things uh, uh, the Lord gave me one day, he said, uh, ask me to raise your faith to my yes, to reach my yes. I said, Lord, raise my faith to reach your yes. Your yes and your promises. Man, I had a glorious week. <laughs> I still use that, but it just didn't happen, you know, like the way it was. <laughs> Not when he tells you. See, when he tells you it's for something specific, then all of a sudden, you know, what, what happened? I didn't tell you. <laughs> okay. See, this is where relationship is so vitally important. This is where we got to know God's impression in his voice. People jump from one thing to another. And the Bible says test all things, but don't jump to all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 10, verse 10. Jesus was speaking. And he said something very powerful. He says, the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Is that a promise? Amen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Yes. He brings, that's a promise, life and life abundantly. Well, you got to live from that promise. But again, you can't claim the promise if you're out of divine order. Oh, Lord, I promise you promised this to me. Yeah, well, you're sleeping with this person. You're lying here. You're touching this. You're drinking this. You're using this. And... Hello? Remember when Jesus exposed the woman that had four or five husbands, and she was shacking up at one, and she wanted a drink from it, <laughs> from the drink from the well? He said, well, you know, <laughs> you need to clean this stuff up for her sister before you can drink from this well. <laughs> but the one that was humble the one with the issue of blood crawled on her hands and knees knew that when she touched the hem of Jesus because he was the healer that she would be healed see she was actually healed before she touched him oh, snap Psalm 103 and verse 1 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his name. How are you going to bless his name? Sing it. Praise it. Call out. Lord, I bless your name. That's what we sing. We bless his name, right? Look at all the songs we sing today with Jesus. Amen? Some, you know, when, when people don't know Jesus, man, those demons start to go, they can't sit still. <laughs> they, they're thinking, man, this music, I can't handle this music any longer. Those demons are about to pop. They start thinking, oh, I'm tired. My life, this, 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 and this, and it. Everything goes to themselves because they're trying to remove the focus from getting free. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all those within me. Bless his own. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his promises. His benefits are promises. Who forgives 
my stupidity and ignorance and all my sins, transgressions, and iniquities and dumb things I've done. When I ask him for forgiveness, amen, I got to repent. Who forgives our iniquities and who does what? He heals all of our diseases. Diseases is an area of discomfort. Amen. When you don't feel good, you're discomforted. Who redeems your life from destruction? Are there things that bring destruction in your life? Drinking, drugs, cancers, all kinds of plagues and pestilence. All of these things are destructions in our life. Amen. It says, who redeems your life from this destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Oh, snap, I love that one. I'm staying 33 till I go home. And my body has to keep up with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I have to put up with my body. <laughs> Praise God. But these are the promises of God. The Bible says we're more than the conquerors. If God is with us, who can be against us? But we've got to live from them. You know, you can quote them, but you've got to live from them. We talked the other day when we had our meeting about, you know, there's a difference between quoting scriptures and living them. You know, when... When, we, when I use the example, I think it was when we were driving a car, when you first learned how to drive, you had to remember, let's see, because see, people living out of their mind, that's why they're quoting the scriptures. But when you're not living out of your mind, you're living out of the spirit, you're living it. But you know, when we were learning how to drive, we had to convince ourselves, gas, brake, gas, brake. Then you're, you know, you get behind someone, and you hit the gas, oh! and then you're, oh! and you're you're figuring it out. You're still getting it together, the gas and the brake, the gas and the brake. You should see when I was teaching my daughter how to drive a, a standard vehicle. Oh, my God. I had whiplash. And then she stalled out in the middle of a four-way intersection and cried. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Crying? Your car's all over the place. Don't cry now. Put the clutch in and let's get out of here. <laughs> I can't take this not No. I thought about getting out of the car and pushing it. But now that she learned, she's all proud of herself. And she I know how to drive a shift, a standard car. And all of her girlfriends are, oh, really? You know how to drive? So she can get in trucks and drive this, that, whatever. But again, once you don't, you don't, it doesn't come out of your mind. Does everybody get it? Once it doesn't come out of your mind anymore and you are living it, you can get any truck and drive. You can get any car and drive. Of course, some of them are a little strange. Now, you got to, there's no ignition. It's like, what the heck is this? You got to push the button. You got to hit the key in your pocket, this, that, whatever. I don't know. Somebody's got to be in a passenger seat. I don't know. But there's strange things in how they drive now, you know. So you got to learn their ways. But again, driving it, gas and pedal, it's automatic. Same thing with reverse. You know, when you first started driving, you'd and you go in the front. Oh, gosh. Uh, or you're driving, and you put it, and it goes in reverse, and you hit the guy behind you or whatever. You put it on the left-hand signal instead of right-hand. But again, until it becomes, till you live it, once you live it, it's automatic. Same thing with living from the promises of God. Look at there's nothing wrong. You know, you sense when you're being attacked or you're not feeling well. Amen? So you start battling it right then and there. Don't wait. And look at I don't wait to ask God if I can take an aspirin. Because he's already told me before, use what I've given you. Remember, the trees that are in heaven in the glory of God and in the, th in, 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 in the new Jerusalem, they're trees of healing. Amen? The trees of healing. They were taken off the, from the eat, take, partaking in the trees of healing. So there are things that God has given us for healing. The Bible says, anoint the head of the sick and they will recover. That's a process of healing. It doesn't mean that they can't have a miracle instantly. But there's a process as you cooperate with God's promises. Everything comes to pass. Amen? Is everybody okay? 
Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of saints. How wonderful that is. That's why it says forsake not to assemble. And let, your, let total freedom and true ministries rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king, and let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and pipe that's your hands and your mouth. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. See, the pride can't lift their hands. They can't worship. Let the saints be joyful in glory. And let them sing aloud on their bed. Well, praise God, we're not in our bed. We're assembled. We can sing louder. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people. Now, these are not the righteous people. These are the wicked. To bind their kings with chains. These are places of position that they hold. And their nobles with fetters of iron. We have the authority to bind and loose. And to execute on them the written judgment, the promises of judgment. This honor have all his saints. This is ours, praise the Lord. But if you don't know this, and you're not living from it, the enemy will take advantage of you. He'll take advantage of you. We've got to live it. It's time to live it, more to live it. Amen? Not just quote it. We've got to live it. And so it gets from the mind into the spirit, and we live it. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And I pray today, Lord, that this will be a, as we enter this new season, a new beginning of new, the reality that you're resetting, Lord, that we learn to live from your promises, which is also living from the future. That we may be an example and carriers of the anointing of your truth and of your life. And be a sign and wonder to the world so that they may come forth into your kingdom. Let your peace, joy, and righteousness be manifested in us and through us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.